During the CSS Stone Age, developers were creating layouts with floats and positioning until one fateful day, Flexbox would be introduced and the world would never be the same. To use Flexbox, first we need a container and some children in our HTML. Then in our CSS, we can go straight to the bottom of the file, ignoring all of the base tiles and give the container the display of flex. This created two invisible axes, a main axis and a cross axis. Our items are no longer stacked on top of one another because display flex is positioning our items on the main axis and by default, the main axis is horizontal. If we want, we can change the main axis to be vertical with the flex direction property. If we set the flex direction to column, the main axis will be vertical. But if we set it to row, the main axis will be horizontal. We actually want our main axis to be horizontal. So we set flex direction to row or we could remove it entirely because flex direction is set to row by default. Now, knowing the direction of our main axis, we can align our items along the main axis with the justify content property. The default is flex start. See, nothing happened. But if we set it to flex end, our items will be pushed to the end of the line. Center will center our items in the middle. Space between will evenly distribute the items in between the first and the last item. Space around is similar to space between, but now the edges also have some spacing to them. And finally, space evenly will evenly distribute space in between all the items. Justify content is for aligning items on the main axis, but we can also align items along the cross axis with the align items property. Flex start places items at the start of the cross axis. Flex end places items at the end of the cross axis. Center will center our items in the middle of the cross axis and baseline will align items so that the baseline text of each item is aligned. You can see this more clearly when I increase the size of some items. The font size on the first item is now larger than the second, but with align item set to baseline, the baseline of both text are aligned. Now just to clarify because this is important, justify content is aligning items on the main axis and align items is aligning items on the cross axis. If we don't define a flex direction on the container, then flex direction is set to row by default, which also means that the main axis is set to horizontal by default, left to right, and that the cross axis is set to vertical by default, top to bottom. We can switch them so that the main axis becomes vertical instead of horizontal by defining a flex direction of column. When the flex direction is set to column, Justify content will still align items on the main axis, but now that we defined the flex direction to be column, the main axis is now vertical. This is the key to understanding Flexbox. By default, flex items will all try to fit into one line. When I add more items to the container, the items will start crushing each other. To fix this, we can make our items wrap with the flex wrap property. By default, this is set to no wrap but we can set it to wrap and now our items are no longer trying to fit into one line but instead are allowed to wrap when there's no more space available. When we have flex wrap set to wrap, a new property is unlocked, the align content property, not to be confused with align items. Align content property only works when we have flex wrap set to wrap and have items wrapping. This property allows us to align everything on the cross axis. The possible values that go here are pretty much the same as with the justified content. So flex end, center, space between, space around, space evenly, and flex start. You can also add gaps in between items. Currently all our items are touching each other. We can use the gap property on the container to add gaps in between each item like this. All the flexbox properties I've shown you so far belong inside the container. But there's also a few other Flexbox properties that belong in the direct children of the container. FlexGrow is one of them, but before I get into it, in the HTML I'm going to remove most of the items and leave just the first three. Then back in our CSS we can remove the flex wrap and the align content because we don't need them anymore. Then under our container we can select the third item by its class name, item3, and give it the flex grow of 1. Flex grow takes a unitless value that serves as a proportion 
and what it does is allows the item to grow if there's enough space for it to do so. We see our third item grew to fill out the remaining space. The same will happen if instead I apply this rule on either the first or second item. If they all have flex grow set to 1, then the remaining space will be distributed equally to all children. Next is flex shrink. Flex shrink also takes a unitless value. This property though defines how fast one item shrinks in comparison to the others. If I set item 1 to have a flex shrink of 5, for example, the item 1 will shrink much faster than the other items. If I don't want an item to shrink at all, I can set it to flex 0. Now the item is refusing to shrink. Flex bases defines the size of an item before the remaining space is distributed. Basically, if your item already has a size like a width, but you want to overwrite that size with something else, then you use flex bases. For example, my item has a width of 150 pixels. I can overwrite that by setting the flex bases to something else like 300 pixels. Now my item has a width of 300 pixels. If you set it to zero, you're basically shrinking it to the max. Personally, I almost never, except in a few niche exceptions, use either the flex grow, flex shrink, and flex bases, but instead I use the shorthand called flex. Flex is the shorthand for the flex grow, flex shrink, and flex bases combined, but the second and third parameters are optional. When you set flex to only have one value like flex1, the other two optional values are set automatically and intelligently for you. Another item property is the align self. This one will overwrite the value you set in the align item on the container, but for an individual item. So for example, if I have align item set to flex start on the container, but want the first item to be aligned center on the cross axis, I can use the align self property to overwrite what I defined in the container and have this individual item be placed at the center. Other than center, you can also have flex start, flex end, and baseline as possible values. The last property is the order property. By default, our items are laid out in the order of our HTML, item 1, item 2, and item 3. However, we can use this property to change the order in which items appear. Say, if I want the last item to appear first, I can give it the order property and set it to minus 1. Minus 1 because the default value of this property is 0. This means that all our items have an order set to 0 by default. So for us to have the third item appear first, I need to set it to minus 1. If I want the first item to appear last, then I give it the order of 1. This property, by the way, really shouldn't be something you use unless you absolutely have to. Because it messes with the semantics and the accessibility of your HTML. If you enjoyed the video or learned something, please consider leaving a like and booping the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.